Before this video starts, I would like to give a huge thanks to the people who support me via my Patreon page. Without your support, this video would not be happening. So thank you. Thank you. Have you ever thought about the skill system in Mithras? You know, when it's time to roll your brawn skill to bash through that jam door. What do those scores on your D100 actually mean? And what are the top five things to remember about skill rolls? Well, in this video, I am going to talk about what I think are the five top things about to remember about skill rolls. My name's Inwills. And welcome to the in crowd. Hello and welcome back. You have stumbled across one of my short rules videos, all to do with the Mithras rule set. In these shorter rule videos, I tend to focus more concisely or in depth of certain rules associated with the Mithras system. But in this video, I'm going to change the format slightly and I'm going to share with you my top five tips about ensuring the skill system runs smoothly in your game. Now, just to let you know, these were the top five things that I had behind my screen, on my notice board, on my pad. So when I was first um, DGMing the game, I had them to hand so I knew exactly what they meant and it really did help to make the game run more smoothly. Now just to let you know this um, video is only going to be about skills and I'm going to do another video about difficult grades and the different types of roles for example of posed or differential roles. Okay let's get on with it here's my top five tips. Top tip number one, always succeed. So remember that where, when rolling the dice 1d100, it is important to remember that a roll of 0, 1 to 0, 5 is always a success, no matter what the character's skill level is or difficulty grade of the task is set at. This is always good to remember, even when the player or the character thinks it's completely hopeless, there's always a chance. Top tip number two, always fail. So just as a roll of zero to one to zero to five is always a success, a roll of 96 to 100 on your percentile dice is always a failure, no matter how high the character's skill is. You can work very, very hard on a skill, but there's always that chance that on that day or at that crisis moment that you mess up and the skill fails. And let's face it, we all have our off days. Top tip number three skills above 100. So skills can be raised above 100% and this is really important to remember and even if you're just starting off with Mithras your players might be saying well what's the point of raising skills above 100? Well the important thing is that the amount that the skill is over 100 is actually used to subtract um, a certain amount from the opposing role of a, a character or a monster. So, so let's give me, let's, I'll give you an example here. Say, for example, I had a skill of 125% in my combat style. Then when I'm fighting an opponent, I would actually deduct or they would actually deduct 25% from their skill. And that is calculated because my skill is 125%, which is 25% above 100. Now, remember that if my opponent had a skill of 
30% with their sword, they're actually going to reduce that down to 10%. And in doing so, their crit chance is going to um, decrease and their chance of actually hitting me is going to decrease as well. So yeah, a really good swords person can actually mean that uh, somebody who's not good with their sword can hardly hit them at all. Pretty much like real life. Top tip number four. Oops, that's a fumble. So there is always a chance that the skill will be a fumble. Something unusual or drastic might happen. And there's some ideas for this in the skill section of the Mithras core rulebook. Now, when a, f a skill is fumbled, it means that if you roll a score of 99 or 100%, when you're doing your skill roll, then there has been a fumble. Now, the other thing to remember that if your skill is above 100%, then a fumble only happens if you roll 100% exactly. So that's another advantage of getting your skill above 100. Now, although a fumble result can provide some unexpected um, results, you do have to remember that any skill that you fumble, you actually gain 1% at the end of the adventure when your skill rolls are being used. Even if you fumble, you can definitely learn from it. Top tip number five, let's get critical. So there is a chance that as well as fumbling, you can actually perform the skill so well that you gain a, a better result. And that is called a critical success. Now, the critical success for a role or skill is one tenth of the skill. OK, so one tenth or lower of their skills. So, for example, if I have a sword skill of 56 percent, then a critical would happen um, if I roll six or below. Um, because one tenth of 56 is 5.6. And of course, in Mithras, we always round up. So just like there's a chance to fumble, you can also have the chance to do something amazing. And that's it. My top five tips for using skills in Mithras. If you would like a more in-depth look at the skills, then I'll link a video up at the top here. So you can click on and see the original video that was done in a lot more depth. I hope these top five tips have been helpful for you. And remember, if you would like me to cover any other rules in the game, then do just drop me a line or an email or put a comment in the comments section below. OK, so until next time, I hope all your post rolls are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mythrassing, everyone. See ya. Bye. I don't know why I do that with my finger.